Right, welcome everybody, it's Ostentatious here and this is Planet Crafter and in this video I'm going to be trying to just give some very useful tips on your base and just get getting um, a very efficient base and basically trying to make everyone's life just a bit easier. Um, so I'll, I'll include some, some other tips and just maybe showcase a few things as we go along um, but as you'll see like I'm, I'm really far advanced in this game I've, I've played the game to death I've spent well over a hundred hours in this game now it's a single player game um, just a very brief rundown of what it is it's a it's an indie game made on a budget which to be frank puts a lot of AAA games to shame in my opinion um, it's a single player game it's a survival game and essentially you start with nothing this is an entirely barren mars looking planet when you start and the idea is is it's a survival game in that you've got to uh, manage your resources manage things like food oxygen and water all while trying to terraform this planet back to what we see now which is um, a livable living breathable planet like earth um, so when you start it will look nothing like this it will be red skies there'll be no water no trees no nothing and then eventually as you progress and progress and progress further in the game you unlock much more upgrades you um, yeah get all of the materials all of the mining all of the farming everything done properly um, you as you progress you'll go through different terraforming stages and then you'll finally get to this stage which is kind of uh, a much more livable planet as opposed to when you start. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'm going to do first off is just show you, uh, give you tips on the base because I've seen a lot of comments on this and you know people c complaining and going wrong and not knowing really what to do because it doesn't handhold this game. There's no real sort of instructions if you like. You've just got to kind of wing it and work it out as you go along. Um, but yeah, th this this area here. So just just to start with, um, this area here is going to be where most players start. You'll start in a little capsule. It might be over there. It might be over there. It might be here, or it might be somewhere over here. Um, but this sort of middle area in the game, uh, in the middle of the map, is as central as it is in the game. And it's actually a really good starting area to stay as well because it's got kind of, you're in the middle of everything. You've got aluminium over here. You've got um, iridium over here. You've got lots of crashed ships all around you. Uh, you've got osmium caves up here. You've got what will eventually be a lake here. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of flat space to build. So my my in my personal opinion, don't really move from this starting area um, this is probably going to be your best bet for building a base now with that in mind as you'll see this is a lake here and a lot of players will start in this basin and if we quickly just go over here as you'll see I'm, I'm actually using my jetpack you do get a jetpack later in the game which makes traversing a heck of a lot easier as well so as long as you're patient um, the game does become a bit more enjoyable as you uh, unlock a few more things but look as you'll see this whole area here was just rock it was like Mars with rocks everywhere and this is where I started so this is this was my starting area here and this was just a red barren planet but as you can see if you start at this low level ground you will be forced to actually move your base because nothing will work like electronics and stuff it doesn't work underwater so you will be forced to move your base um, over over here anyway or up on higher ground so my advice as soon as you start the game once you've kind of got to grips with your oxygen water and food management um, look for these this little rock formation here so you should see this like little triangular, little like sort of Stonehenge looking thing here. Um, and it doesn't matter where you start in this area, you should see this. So just, if you head towards this, this will never ever go underwater. 
Pluto, we've just got a special asteroid, and that's going to be pulsar ports there. Well, we don't need it, we can go grab that a bit later. Um, but yeah, so if you head towards this rock formation here, this is kind of bang, slap bang in the middle of the map uh, in the game. And your this this whole area just behind it never gets flooded. So, so my initial advice will be when building your first, even like your first little unit here, like this livable compartment, start building here, just behind this rock formation. And that way, as as the game progresses and um, water starts forming, you know you're going to be safe. So just go behind here and anywhere in this area here. Um, right, so when it comes to the base, with all that in mind, this game involves a hell of a lot of crafting. Like I've, I'm, I'm a bit of a survival game enthusiast. I've spent a lot of hours playing various games. A lot of people will know me from No Man's Sky. I've spent thousands of hours in that game and yeah, pretty much most games that involve a lot of crafting and a lot of, um, uh, you, you know, uh, looting and going and picking out resources and stuff like that. I've done these games to death and this game here is certainly one of, if not the most strenuous in terms of uh, the amount of manual crafting that you need to do. Um, the the amount of crafting to make uh, all of these different things, as you can see, they all involve um, a lot of different resources. There's no real sort of single resource that is used in all of the things. Like they they do vary. Iron is obviously quite common, but you're you're going to find that if you're not a person that likes crafting stuff, this game isn't for you because there's there's a lot of that. Um, and when it comes to base building, you've always got to be thinking ahead um, in this game in terms of expansion. And you want to try and make your life as simple and as easy as it possibly can be. And what will do that for you eventually, after about sort of 10 to 12 hours of gameplay, you'll unlock this thing here the auto crafter it needs two osmium and one super alloy rod um, and they're these things here now these things here are the basis of um, automation they will make your life so much easier so once you've unlocked these and it, and it is after a good few hours in this game um, life becomes a lot easier and you can get you can start getting things made without actually going to get the resource or product and what you'll see is if I hover on them they've got a radius so this one here as you can see it, it, it puts out a radius and essentially anything within the radius of this auto crafter and anything that has storage whether it be a storage container like this and by the way these are the new storage containers in the most recent update. This is what we had for, for, for months and months and months. This was the maximum storage we could have. This was the tier two, uh, or the, the, the largest storage container that was available to us. But in an update a couple of weeks ago, we now have these. And these um, are about th at least three or four times bigger than the one that we had before so the, these are great this is a great little addition but um, whether it's a container or whether it's um, these things here with food or whether it's um, uh, you know whatever is stored in in here you know anything that basically has something that you can store these auto crafters will pick that inventory up and use whatever is in that inventory if it needs it and what you'll see is if I click on this you'll see here this is this is the product you can choose what products you want this auto crafter to make and every product that you've got unlocked will be in here as a choice so once you've chosen what you want to make all these things here you'll see are things within the radius of this 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 particular this specific auto crafter so it's seen 
all these DNA manipulators, all these food growers, it's seen all the algae, as you'll see at the bottom there, those green canisters, that's all the algae growing in the, uh, in the lake beneath me, as well as all of these different storage uh, containers you'll see there. So not just the four that I've got here, there's some above me. So bearing that in mind, if you want to make your life as as easy as it can be when it comes to making things, um, it's all about these auto crafters, and it's all about um, getting things placed within the radius of these auto crafters. And the radius isn't just left and right and back and forward; it's up and down as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, I've just died here, so we'll just go back in. Um, so, so yeah, you've, you've got to basically build your base thinking about auto crafters. That's my, that's my uh, major tip when it comes to building bases. Always think ahead and think about building around automation. And the reason I say that is because if you look at my base, my advice would always be to build your base partially over the water and, and partially over land as well. I've actually chosen to build this entirely over water, but um, always build your base at least one ladder or one of these support um, brackets high off the ground. Because what you can do, again, I'm always gonna refer to the auto crafter and its radius, its like sphere radius, um, if you build your base slightly above ground, you can plonk algae under it in water. You can plonk water collectors that obviously collect water. You can, you can put, um, as you'll see over here, you can build uh, one frame or even two frames off the ground and leave enough room to even build farms on these, uh, on these support brackets. Um, and as and you um, you'll see like the auto crafters are just here, so these even the food on these farms are all being picked up, and they even pick up stuff on the roof. So on the roof, if we can get there. So I've got gas. If I can get up there, right. So on the roof, this side I'm farming methane. On the roof and this side I'm farming nitrogen over here so all of these have got inventories and you don't and you know if you build enough of them you don't even need to store them in containers you can just keep them stored in these inventories in here this is all methane this helps build uh, pulsar quartz but the point being and then you can put your drones we'll get to drones in a minute but you can put your drones on the roof as well just to make everything a bit easier um uh yeah but so just just to kind of recap what what you want to do with bases is always always have like a central point in your base uh where i've got three auto crafters just below me in this little room here if you go down here see them there I've got three there, right in the middle of this base. So those three auto crafters in there will pick up virtually everything around here. So if I want to make any products, I can just do it without even worrying about it because all of the, the produce, whether it be from the farm, whether it be from the algae growing in the lake, or whether it be from the gas in here, and whether it be from any of the stored materials that I've got in the containers. So like up here, I've got a whole row just filled. This is, and, and this is all automated as well, by the way. I don't collect this. This is all filled and stacked by drones. Um, but yeah, like all of these materials here, these auto crafters will just pick up um, Whatever you choose to build in here, it will then build it and it will pick up anything within this radius. And as you'll see here, again, it's picking up everything. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, just, I guess I know I've said this a few times. When it comes to building the base, 
really just want to drive home that you need to think about the future and you need to think about um, automation and how are you going to get your base to be efficient like this where you haven't got to worry about any products um, and any crafting at all and if you do it properly you leave at least uh, a big gap under it then you've got your main floor here and a third floor any auto crafters essentially on these two floors here will pick up anything yeah as long as you don't go too big um, so, so yeah that's I, I just think that's a really helpful and really useful tip to so just always be thinking ahead when you're building out your base um, now with drones um, you, you'll eventually towards the end of the game which seems a bit stupid to me it's one floor in this game I think these drones should be able to be unlocked a lot quicker than what you can in the game you literally you've got to spend about 25 hours in this game before you can even think about building drones but once you get to this point you will eventually start building out a fleet of drones and um, drones are really useful because what you can do is um, I'll show you how essentially they work um, so I'm going to quickly just go to the Osmium cave here so in this Osmium cave I've just got three uh, tier three mining um, operations so when you get to tier three you can choose to mine any of the basic materials including sulfur as well as a special material if it's in the right place so in this cave here this is the iridium cave so any if you place basically any mining any tier two uh, miner or tier three in here um, it will mine iridium and there are various caves offer uranium zeolite um, iridium, osmium and so on and so on and then what you'll do is once you've got drones unlocked you've got a little tab here that's a little cog and you've got demand and supply so what you want to do is you want to basically tell this container here this one here and this one here to all supply iridium so you'll click on that you'll choose the material that you want um, this mining or whatever it is it might be a container that has this it might be the gas you want to supply gas or whatever it is that you want to do you just choose it and then here supply and demand if you want this container filled then you would obviously hit demand if you want it to to be supplied to be delivered somewhere else then you put supply and you click supply and then here is your priority now I don't think that these are actually overly important I have played around with them you can go down to minus one or up to five I don't think that's really that important all I do make sure is that um, and, I, and I honestly don't know if it makes any difference but I just make sure that this number here matches the demand like wherever the container is just to make a note that you've got this as two and try and keep it the same that's what I do that might be completely false information but and that's what I do so once once we've got whatever product it is that you want supplied we've marked all those as supply and then we'll go to where our containers are so we'll we'll go to our containers which are back here And this is the container so here I want this container filled with iridium so on here make sure that this is demand so we want this filled so click demand and then oh, I've got that four for some reason put that down to two um, but yeah so this is demand um, so what will happen is as long as these are empty or you know this is half full and the other things have got iridium in them the drones will then go to work and they will start automatically filling up this container because you've set this container to demand the supply from where we were of iridium 
So you put one as supply and one as demand. This is where you want the stuff to end up. And this is where you want the stuff taken from, right? And then once you do that, um, I'm just going to give an example. I'm going to take some pulsar quartz from here. I'm just going to fill this inventory up. Now you'll already see the drones are going to work without me doing anything whatsoever. Because this autocrafter, this thing here, if I set that to that, watch. See, this is now making, to, to make a pulsar quartz, I need iridium, zillite, osmium, uranium, and methane. So, so with that in mind, the drones now have seen that this here has just had some taken. But I've got this here set up to demand pulsar quartz. And I've got these two things here set up to supply pulsar quartz. So even with the auto crafters, the drones will take the pulsar from here, this is kind of proper lazy, but the drones will take the pulsar quartz and what they will do is they'll start restocking this here. Look, you'll see it. See it up here? And there's the drone. But what's happening is because I'm making pulsar quartz, I'm now obviously using some of this, right? And I'm using some of this. This was all full. That was all full. So now what you're going to see as well is you're going to see the drones restocking all of this for me as well because we've set this to demand and all of these various caves that have this uranium I've set to demand as well and then obviously in the cave I'm supplying this product. So essentially I've got an infinite amount of pulsar quartz now that I can mine and use for power or for, for selling on rockets. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go and put this on a rocket. And this is a, another new addition. You put this on the rocket here, you fill up the inventory, and this will be worth 250 Terra tokens. And then, so you can, with this new addition now, you can basically buy. Um, this is where you would buy um, a tier 2 drone. This is where you would buy that really fancy locker. So the locker that had the huge inventory. You, you need um, a trading rocket now and terror tokens. And you'll basically have a price here. I've got this amount uh, saved up. And you can unlock all, you, you, you'll, you'll unlock the blueprint here for the locker. Or like the big living apartment and then what you'll do is you'll once you've bought it you'll go to the machine that does the uh, blueprints in your base and you'll just basically unlock it um, yeah but what we're going to do is just launch this and send it out to space so that'll get me 250 terra tokens so I've got now an infinite supply literally an infinite supply of money free without me actually lifting a finger no um crafting whatsoever uh, and that's all because i've got an efficient base i've got a base here which is built in in levels but not just to look nice it's built in a way that enables me to collect all of the ingredients and products that i need even without the use of drones most of it I could get from here. Now, what you'll unlock before drones is the um, teleporter. And you'll, you'll find the teleporter just as useful. So this is a teleporter here. Um, you can name the teleporter. So obviously name it for each location. And then what you'll do is once you've unlocked the teleporter, you can go to here click on it and these are all the other teleporters that I've built and as you can see I've obviously built them in the caves which supply the or, or the areas which supply the uh, rarer materials so if we now want to say go to the uranium or let's go to the osmium cave 
just with one click, I'm here. And this is the Osmium Cave that we were in a little while ago. So if you haven't got drones, it's still extremely efficient having teleporters because what you can do is teleport here, quickly run down, grab a load of um, whatever it is that you need and then just literally run back up to your um, teleporter. Now when it comes to mining, what I tend to do is I tend to put down the miners first and then I'll build uh, either a small or large living compartment above the mines. Um, and the reason I do that is, again, when you haven't got drones and you, you haven't got um, full automation, it's still good to have an auto crafter here sitting just above all of these um, mines miners because then you can make things like this easily and you can just uh, come here and collect it rather than even I haven't even got drones set up with this um, you can just come here teleport here and pick all these up and again you haven't got to worry about manually making anything it will just pull stuff from all of these inventories and pull stuff directly from the inventories of these mines. So I always set an auto crafter up just above the mining operation, just in case you need it to build any rods or whatever. Um, and this one's called Osmium. You can change whatever you want to call it here just by clicking on that. So yeah, and then obviously we've got um, z I, I haven't spelt that correctly, so apologies. But then you've got Super Alloy, all of these different materials. And then you know, if you want to make another home base, like a, a, a second base, I've chosen this location here. Um, and uh, this is a, a brand new base here. This is just going to be where all of my basic minerals are if I need them. Um, as well as I'm trying to build a nice sort of uh, this is going to be like a bit more focused on aesthetics when I'm done if I ever finish it um, but yeah this is I've just started building out this space and this is um, like this is like the aquarium that you can get now as well so it has like loads of fish in it and stuff uh, it's quite cool you can go in there as well you can swim with the fishes um, but yeah, so, so so you get the point, right? You've just got to think, always think about efficiency, and um, and yeah, how you lay your, even this base. Again, I've built you know high enough to be above these miners, so that I can stick an auto crafter in there. I've got a gas collector in in between each one of these ladders. Eventually, I've got one here and I've got one this side over here. Um, but yeah, so so like gas materials, one auto crafter kind of somewhere in there, and it will pick all of this up. And you know, eventually this is probably going to hang a little bit out over this water lip here. And if I want to get any algae or anything like that here, I'll be able to do that um, without even uh, thinking about it, like collecting it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of in a nutshell what this video is really about is just building an, an efficient base and making it as efficient as possible to make your life a bit easier because then you can get on with the good stuff like you know going around and building out um, insects like these butterfly farms and you know build, eventually you'll get to a point where you build out these you know you can build frogs using these amphibian farms and stuff and yeah you've got all rockets and all goodness and you know it doesn't the planet doesn't start with anything like this this was just a giant rock um no water no nothing and it's, it's just really cool how you can watch it very slowly transform from essentially what looked like just these rocks everywhere um to being like a lush planet with like grass and if you walk around you'll see like maggots and stuff and like um yeah, like lava all over the floor and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like you'll 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 um, expand out your inventory. You'll get this kind of expanded out. You'll get oxygen tanks unlocked, bigger jetpack, bigger backpack, 
um, you know water filter so you've never got to worry about water and you know various different things um, and yeah then just basically enjoy the game there's a lot of hidden things in this game a lot of hidden caves a lot of uh, secret golden loot crates that have like special loot in it um, in fact I'll show you one of those now just quickly um, to show you what they look like so I'm gonna head to this base here this is just like a little area here but um, just so this this is meteor crater so at the start of the game this is actually a meteor down there and you'll see this there's a few caves that kind of lead to this area um, but there is a there's a new biome which they've opened up uh, just to the this side here so you've got a cave one of the main caves uh, that's actually a, a, a pre-built base that goes underground down there as well there's loads of loot in there so just bear that in mind as well so the, the main cave you'll be coming out is over here so if you come out of the cave basically look look across to where the meteor is and just to the right on that little raised bit there um, I've got a little base there but there's ladders and you'll once you go in the ladder it takes you underground and there's loads of loot but this is the new biome over here um, and it's got lots of crates and stuff and it's you know if you've got a jetpack you can just do this and jump off otherwise you can't but if you go down here just for a reference point so you can see what a golden box looks like there's one just down here and if you look at it it's golden rather than being blue and then inside you'll find uh, various goodies but obviously we've got a golden seed here produces 600% oxygen um, and various stuff that's a terra token so we can collect that and add that now to the inventory um, but yeah it will have various loot and, and the loot actually completely depends on how far advanced in the game you are the more advanced you are the rarer the materials that will show in here like, and the more valuable they'll be so the general advice I've seen from the community is don't look at any loot boxes until you really need to because the longer you hold out the the better the rewards inside even the blue boxes will be you'll get better resources and uh, slightly rarer materials depending what stage of the game and what stage of the terraf terraformation um, process that you're in um, yeah these are the normal boxes here I've already looted that um, so yeah that's uh, that's it really I just thought I'd give um, some hopefully quite useful tips on building your base that's a rocket there has just come back so once the rocket's been out it takes like 560 seconds I think uh, whatever that is in minutes um, uh, to basically come back to the base and then once it comes back if you've bought anything or if you've transported anything to sell um, it comes back with either money or the product or both depending what you've done um, so you've got to wait for it to actually come back before you can um, collect anything or, or get your money um, so I'm just going back to the home base have a drink so yeah I mean basically you'll get to a point where the only thing you've got to worry about is eating food and uh, drinking water but even this is kind of I've got this automated um, so yeah that's that's kind of it and I guess just to showcase a couple of things this is the uh, first rocket platform that you'll probably use um, I think you can unlock these now early in the game as part of the recent update so you can start getting your I would I would tr uh, try and get uh, the trading rocket uh, done as quickly as you can because then you can get the big storage which is really helpful um, these are the fusion reactors so these produce a lot of energy so they give you 1400 1485 power I've got loads of these so I've never got to worry about power now because you actually need 
pulsar quartz to build them. And I've obviously got an infinite supply of that. So I mean, I'm at end game. There's really there's nothing else for me to do in this game. I've unlocked all the achievements, and yeah, I'm 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 finished. Um, until the next update, until they release something else. Um, but eventually, yeah, you'll get to a point where you've got massive machines like these are the tier two diggers, and then you've got big tier three ones here, or tier these might even be tier five. But um, yeah, you'll get to a point where everything's just a bit on a, a much bigger scale, um, like even heaters. So yeah, you, you basically you'll start the biggest drill that you'll get is is this at the start and they will eventually go from this to kind of that there and then they get upgraded to these and then that gets upgraded to that so everything basically just gets bigger and louder um, as you progress through the game um, and I guess just as a last reference point where I'm up to in the game is so that, yeah I'm here so that's that's where I'm up to biomass at 76 kt I'm slowly I haven't really focused too much on this um, so I'm, I'm very small into the next stage but here you'll see I'm um, at um, 800 ppm oxygen and nearly a thousand GTI uh, terraformation. So, uh, and then here's my power. You can look at your monitor your power, monitor all your. This is where you'd basically unlock all your blueprints on this thing here. Um, and you unlock that. These are all the screens here that you can unlock. Um, so yeah, um, that is about it. I hope everyone enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I'll uh, if there's any new updates that come out, if, if you thought this was helpful and it's been quite useful for you, then drop a like, leave a comment. It all helps. And I'll possibly see you in the next update. Have a good one, and I'll speak to you all soon.